Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a minute of your time to tell you the story of my life. Chapter one starts in 1992. I remember being in Ghana. We'd listen to stories by the fireside. As young matches, we were unaware how those tales ignited the fire inside. But these were just the first few pages, the prologue to the novel that would eventually become my life. Chapter two. Funny how quickly that novelty wears off. I remember arriving back in Heathrow in 1995, wondering if we'd accidentally landed on the wrong planet. No city on earth could be this cold. How far had we traveled from the sun? Welcome to London. But my parents are rolling stones. No, they were never in a rock band or on the cover of a magazine. It's just that they never hung around long enough to gather any moss. Trips back and forth to Africa in search for a better life for us always made me feel like the one we had was never good enough. The one I gave them was never good enough. So me and my sisters, we harvested ourselves, trying to see the fruits of my labor hanging from my family tree. But you see, it's hard to grow trees in London City. They said the only way to sow seeds is to get a degree education. So at the age of 18, I watched my first dream die. It's like it fell asleep and decided never to wake up no matter how hard I nudged it. You see, I wanted to play basketball, but my genetics disagreed. As you can see, I barely made it over five foot six, let alone six foot five. Coming back from Basketball Academy in Middlesbrough, felt like I was riding a one-way train on a ticket called failure, with my mother's voice constantly being announced over the tannoy, saying, the only way to sow seeds is to get a degree, education. Chapter three, first semester of university, you had to learn to do adult shit real quick. You learn how to hide the remaining food in the fridge from your flatmates. You learn how to complete an entire assignment and only run one can of Red Bull. And then after nights of a dead mind, you then find yourself in a queue of half awake student zombies waiting to hand in an assignment. Maybe that's why they called it a deadline. You learn what rent is and why your parents' mood used to change whenever it was due. Most importantly, you learn how the system almost deliberately chooses to forget about you. It's like, it's like we went to school for 18 years thinking that we learned so much. We didn't really learn a thing. The only thing we learned is how to stop dreaming like a child. Because the adult world isn't designed for us to dream. It's not designed for us to only feel love. It's a world where a smile is frowned upon, laughter is suspicious, and honesty, honesty is betrayal. It's childhood betrayal. Or our dreams betrayal. Chapter four, education. They said the only way to sow seeds is to get a degree. But in 2009, it's like I found a different garden called YouTube. And I began planting. My first gardening tools were a Sony Handycam my wife bought me for my birthday and a laptop that was already three years too old to use. And I began to tell stories, poetry, the same stories that I lit matches in my heart as a child started to flicker. So every night I sold and I sold, I plowed and I plowed, upload after upload, crowd after crowd. Every video was a stone and my words were like a flint. I gracefully scratched them against one another until eventually we began to light candles around the world. Chapter five, 2012 was a bonfire. People began watching these videos. People began listening to these words. Felt like the only time we celebrated Guy Fawkes and Wood Green. I watched as millions of people connected with the art that I created. My life has never been the same again. My passion became my day job. My dreams became my reality. My fiction became my fact. TV adverts, flights around the world, billboard shows, the seeds that I had planted, the seeds that I had planted had started to grow branches. Every so often, I invite my mother to look at my garden. She tells me she's proud. She tells me it looks beautiful. She tells me I cried way too much as a baby not to have anything constructive to say. And then she asks, is, are you ever gonna do your masters? <laughs> now I'm joking. But she told me that I taught her that life is more than then papers with numbers and letters that decide your fate. Life, life is what you create. It's true. The only way to grow trees is to sow seeds. But education exists in so many different ways. So many ways that you can create. Chapter six, the fire is still burning and I guess the story is still being written. Safe.